Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Age Changer Show brought to you by Summit Life Ministries. My name is David Furrow. This is my dad, Lynn Furrow, also the founder of Summit Life Ministries. And this is my mom, Carmen. As we always say, and we start every show, our mission at Summit Life is to elevate, equip, and empower. Elevate the church's vision to see God's eternal purpose. Equip believers to live with an eternal perspective, but then also empower believers to live supernatural lifestyles in faith-filled obedience. Now, Dad, we are still continuing on in Hell's Best Kept Secret. And yesterday, we ended with, why doesn't God just squash the devil? Yeah. <laughs> why does he allow him into heaven yes. and he's still the adversary in the book of Job? Yes. Yes. And I'm going to actually read the text because okay. uh, I think it's important for us to see the state of affairs at that time in human history. But our whole theme this week... It has been about what I described or I entitled these episodes, Hell's Best Kept Secret. This is still something that the enemy wants to create a cover-up. He doesn't want uh, the church to know what Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. Uh, He wants to think, wants us to think that simply uh, a, a small Uh, amount of damage has been done, that Mm -hmm. he is able to keep up all appearances, that his kingdom is intact, Mm -hmm. that the structure is intact, and that by and large, he is still able to have complete sway Mm -hmm. over this planet. And I tell you, his infrastructure is rotten. (laughs) His foundations have been unraveled. What you see today is an apparatus that if we would just kick down the door a little yeah. bit, it would all collapse upon itself. And thank God there is going to be a church mm-hmm. that emerges in the the, the, the last days. Because yeah. Jesus has been building a church. Mm-hmm. He has been laying a foundation. Mm-hmm. He has been building a holy habitation of God in and by his spirit. And that church will prevail even to the strongest gates yeah. of that kingdom of darkness, the very gate of hell itself. And so this is a, uh, a story that needs to be declared. This is a truth that must be emphasized. We need to, to completely uh, have a confidence to know that what Jesus did was an absolute destruction and annihilation of the works of the devil. Yeah. So this is a secret. Uh, this this overthrow of the power of Satan and his kingdom and its order and apparatus of authority has been so destroyed, a, such a devastating blow has been struck against it that Satan cannot maintain his power and his control over this planet any longer. Yeah. He wants to keep that knowledge a secret. Yeah. He wants to keep that a secret. Yeah. But it's time that the works of darkness be exposed and that the light of the truth of the victory of the cross and the resurrection and the ascension of the cross fully be explained and declared so the people of God can lead our lives mm-hmm. Not unto a victory, but from a place of victory. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to Job chapter 1. I had to get that off my heart. That was a lot. (laughs) But I want to trumpet this message. I want to declare it. The devil has and is been defeated. Absolute, total defeat of the enemy in every way, shape, or form. Matter of fact, going back to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, when it says destroy, that word destroy means annihilation. Mm-hmm. There, you know, sometimes uh, in military campaigns yeah. and, uh, you know, that certain individuals have been trying to defend a line or defend a position or defend a stronghold. And at a certain point when, when you know, the offensive capability of an army has been so overwhelming and great that certain officers have to come together and they have to convene a military council and say, we are no longer defensible. In other words, there is no means by which we can defend this position. We either have to retreat from it or surrender it. The devil is in an indefensible position. (laughs) 
He is indefensible. And that's why if there will be an army of God that will allow our commander to take the lead, he will lead us from victory unto victory. Uh, He will lead us as the breaker who comes to the head and he will make the way before his people and bring us into victory as the Lord of the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just want to encourage us to move forward because now we've been entrusted again. We've been reauthorized with an authority from Mm -hmm. the king. What Adam lost He has now been reauthorized. We've been reauthorized with an authority through the second man, Mm -hmm. the second Adam, who who did not fail, did not sin. Uh, He could have rebelled. He could have sinned, but was faithful in his allegiance and a loyalty to the kingdom of his father. Now God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Not only in the earth, not only is the name of man known in the earth, but now the name of that second Adam is known also in the unseen realm. And he's been given an authority both now in heaven and earth. Can't wait to teach on that, (laughs) but it's coming. But now that is the one who who is the captain of our salvation. He is now the leader of the human race. I want to follow him. Because he's going to regain and retake what Adam lost in totality. So let's go back to the state of affairs of the way things were. And it seemed like there was this moment where of coexistence between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. In Job chapter 1 verse 6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God, and this is an Old Testament term for the angels of God, They came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, and the word Satan simply means adversary. Mm -hmm. And the adversary, but it's it's being contrary or adverse, uh, adverse to someone or an adversary to someone in a certain way. So we could say the adversary or the accuser. So the way... He was an adversary, was he was a lawyer. He would come and bring a legal case against God or against God's subjects. Yeah. And he would come and he would be an adversary to God. And it seemed like his voice could not be silenced in heaven. It's like that God tolerated this adversary to come in and to make accusation, to come in and have a place where he could spout off his mouth and could form and weaponize his words to make accusation against God or against any one of God's creation. And it said that Satan came in, the adversary of God also came among them. I would have thought that after Satan's rebellion against God, there was, and God saying, Satan, you have rebelled against me. You're no longer permitted to come before my presence. You would think that there would have been a no trespassing <laughs> sign uh, yeah. outside the gate of heaven, let alone the very court of the Lord, the throne room of God. But it said that he came in with the other angels And the Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. Now, can you imagine? Because when we read that, we don't think that there is any spite or any arrogance in that statement. Because who did God put on the planet to walk and to traverse the earth? and to have an expression and dominion Mm. over it. It was Adam and Eve. And so now Satan comes in to the courts of the Lord, and God says, where have you been? And he said, I've been upon the earth, and I have walked over it every square mile, every inch of it, 
Why? Claiming. Because mm. it is now in my uh, possession. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The arrogance, but also you see that he thinks that he has God in a perfect dilemma where God has to tolerate his arrogance, his rebellion, and that God cannot do anything about it. Now, I want us to go over to Galatians, if you would, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. And before I read this text of Galatians chapter 4, I want to read a quote from C.S. Lewis's book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. (laughs) Because obviously the enemy is blinded in his arrogance. And he actually thought that he could outthink God, yeah. outstrategize God, mm-hmm. outplan God, that he could actually win against God, the Almighty God. The created could actually outwit and put God in an unwinnable situation. But we are going to see. So when you look at the in the Old Testament, you go, okay, I guess this is the way things are going to be mm-hmm. for all time. That for God to try to do anything, Satan's legally got him in a position where he can in, uh, accuse mm-hmm. God of injustice. So God does not immediately act when man falls. He just tells him the consequence of the fall. He said, you know, the works of your hands are going to be cursed. He said it's going to become very painful where you would have been blessed in multiplication. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be with pain and travail. The ground is not going to be fruitful for you. The, The authority that you used to have, you're not going to have a command and authority to have the dominion that I envisioned for you to have, because because you know you're going to have to exert a power that is not based upon a spiritual power that has mm. divine favor and grace upon it, and so you're going to have to exert what your the strength of your flesh can can produce, and it's going to be very hard going for you because you you've opened up a spiritual door and you've allowed sin to multiply and it will infect and bring in uh, an absence of blessing upon the entire creation. And so it it's like God is saying to mankind, this is just the way it's going to be. But God, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who cannot be outwitted, who cannot be outstrategized, uh God has a plan, and that plan is about ready to be set in motion uh, in Christ and is appearing in the world, and he will forever, by his life, his perfection, and through his work on the cross, resurrection, and his ascension, we're going to see that he severs forever the fate of Satan and mankind, Mm -hmm. And he doesn't do it unjustly. He doesn't act in an illegal or an immoral way, but he does it through the law of God. Mm -hmm. And he does it justly in a way in which Satan cannot accuse God of being unjust, sinful, or immoral. But he does it in a way in which he brings liberation for man to renew, to restore, and to redeem him, but also mm-hmm. then to be able to rightly carry out the sentence, yeah. sentence of judgment against Satan and his kingdom. Now, this is a quote from C.S. Lewis, and uh, C.S. Lewis hated to be called a Christian <laughs> apologist, but in fact, he became one of the greatest Christian apologists of the 20th century. But also, uh, him and another author, Uh, token, wrote these modern-day parables that illustrated powerful spiritual truths. And I love 
uh, this statement by C.S. Lewis in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And, you know, there was this moment then one, and, and you'll have to help me, Carmen, with one, which one of the triad of kids got deceived by Satan. Yeah, there were four kids. And there were four Edmund, kids. Edmund, Edmund was the, was the one. <laughs> yeah. Who got seduced by uh, the witch. The witch. Oh, Edmund. And it looked like Edmund could not oh, be and the redeemed. the witch called herself the queen yeah. because yeah. she had ruled the land for so long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and put the land under a spell mm-hmm. where everything was frozen. And uh, not we, to be confused with just regular winter, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but Edmund, you know, there was this concern could he ever be brought yeah. back? Could he ever be brought out from under the spell? And so, when they were asking Aslan about Edmund's faith, this is what Aslan said He said, Though the witch knew the deep magic. Mm-hmm the way things worked, the way principles and laws Mm -hmm. worked. Aslan said this, there is a magic deeper still, which she, the witch, did not know. Her knowledge goes back only to the dawn of time. But if she could have looked a little further back into the stillness (laughs) and the darkness before time dawned, she would have read that there was a different incantation. She would have known that when a willing victim who had committed no treachery was killed in a traitor's stead, the table would crack and death itself would start working backwards. And so what we're going to begin to talk about now is a mystery that was kept hidden before the yeah. ages began. One of the statements that's uh, pretty stunning is when it talks about Jesus as the Lamb of God. It talks about him not just as a, the Lamb that appeared in time and space, in the fullness of time, and that's mm-hmm. the text we're going to read. But it also describes him as a Lamb that was slain before Mm -hmm. the foundations of the world. Mm -hmm. That Jesus, when he was born, when he entered into time and space, he was born to To die. die. Yeah. For us traitors. For the traitors. And that, I'm going to go ahead and read the text because it'll help me not (laughs) contemplate too deeply on that born to die, slain before the foundations of the world. But obviously, even though Satan thought that his his craftiness could, could outwit God, his wisdom, the wisdom of his age, could outwit the wisdom of God, God was going to catch the crafty in his craftiness. Yeah. He was going to turn the table on his enemy by luring him into what he had already predetermined as something that he was going to be willing to do for man yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Because we need to understand that Adam and Eve were created with a free will. Yeah. Because God was not wanting those that would love and serve him out of some type of a mechanical, robotic sense that they were forced to serve God. No, God, God, the reason why Adam and Eve was so unique was that God set them into this place of glory and honor. But he said, if I have a relationship with you, I want our relationship to be based upon a freedom. Mm -hmm. Because for love to be love, for intimacy to truly happen, there has to be a freedom where you choose to love. Yeah. And so I set my affection upon you. I choose to love you, Adam. I choose to love you, Eve. And 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 my calling to love you is going to be irrevocable. My 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 gift that I give you, the gift of my love, the grace of my love, the empowering of my love towards you 
will be in irrevocable. There will not be one day that I change my eternal mind, that it was a mistake when I made you. But no, I will set my love upon you. And that in that environmental love, you're going to have a choice to either accept that love or to reject that love, to reject a relationship with me or to accept a relationship with me. But that no matter what, I choose to love you. And I know that when I love you, that that means there is the, 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 the opportunity for you to betray me. But I am going to include in my sovereign plan, knowing that you will betray me, you will fail, you will fall, but that my love will win. And that is the deeper magic because we we need to understand the, the, the principle of a higher law than the law of justice. That the law of love and the, the law of mercy triumphs over judgment. Okay. Yeah. And, and if we were using C.S. Lewis's language, the law of love and mercy, and really mercy being a byproduct of perfect love, it triumphs over the law of justice that says the soul that sins, they must die. Yeah. Mercy always triumphs over judgment. Now we've got to stop this session, but we're going to pick it up next week yeah. where we leave off right here. And I never got to Galatians chapter four, but we're going to see that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. So good. Well, guys, we thank you for being with us today. Guys, if you have questions or comments about today's episode, please leave them in the comment section below. Guys, if you just want to know about more about Summit Life Ministries, please visit us at summitlifeministries.com. If you want to just get all things Summit Life, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. Guys, again, we appreciate you guys being with us today. We appreciate each and every one of you. Guys, we hope you are blessed. Thank you and have a great day. Bless you. Love you.